Hey kids, welcome to the Status Rumble Animation Time thing. Today, we're gonna just play a little bit with this little bouncing ball. The bouncing ball is so underrated. A lot of people, they start animating and they're like, oh man, I can't wait to animate because it's the coolest thing. So I'm gonna just animate this dragon fighting dude and getting big scrap and then there's swords and fire and like two or three drawings in, they hate animating because it doesn't, it's just not working. It looks terrible. And why, why did you do that? So I recommend <laughs> If you're starting to get an animation, even if you've been animating for a while and you just want to improve your animation, just go back to the ball. The ball is so great. If you want to practice simple things like timing, squashing, and stretching, the ball is perfect. Because you're not wasting all your time trying to keep your character all tight and making sure that they stay on model and stuff like that. You can practice you, different timings. It took me five minutes to set this up. So here's five different timings. And it took no time at all. So you can experiment with where you put your drawings, how close together things are, how far apart they are. Some of these are on one, some of these are on two. So you can see how that gives you a different look. And it's going to take you no time. If you only have one day to learn something and you, you spend the whole time drawing your dragon, then you're not going to learn as much in that time. So the first one, super, it's literally even timing. So let me grab this guy, turn on my onion skin. So bloop. You can see everything is perfectly spaced. So the timing is very even. It's just going from point A to point B and back again. Boop, 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 boop. And I turn that off, start there. It looks like this is like Billy's first animation. You're like, okay, it's doing the thing, it's bouncing, but it's not good. So the first, the easiest thing you can do is just put a little ease on it. So now it's going a little bit slower as it hits the, the high part and it's a little bit faster towards the bottom. I'll turn on my onion skin for that guy. You can see that these guys are closer together and it's not a huge difference. We can set it a little bit more exaggeratedly. -er. So here I'm gonna use my ease parameters and it's set right now to 45. This handle, if you've ever used the Maya Graph Editor, it's a similar but not as good version of that. And you can set your timing. If you want to slow out, you pull this guy straight out. And here you can set a number. So it's it's like a percentage. So here at 50% ease out. I just had it on 40. Let's put it up like 65. 65 and zero. It's, the spacing is going to be a little tighter. And then also the last frame, because the the first and the last frame are the, the high point. So I'm also going to put the the ease on this, the ease in. Loop. So now instead of 45, it's going 65. And there we go. It's a little nicer. Boonk, boonk, boonk. Then, you know, it wasn't really doing enough for me. So I threw in this squash. Bloop. So now it squashes as it hits. So it's a minor difference, but it kind of gives a little bit more of a boonk when it hits. Boonk, boonk. The next one, I actually set on twos. And I also, when it gets closer to the bottom, it starts to stretch out. I might narrow that down a little bit. I think he's a little bit fat. There we go. So he's starting to stretch out. And then when he hits, he squashes. I'm gonna give him a bit more squash too. Let's, let's go crazy. And then he comes back up. I've staggered the down and the up. So here and here. This one's a little bit lower just so that they're not mirroring each other. Because here, this one on this frame and on this frame, boop, boop, they're in the exact same position. So that can get a little bit mirrory and samey. So this one's just getting a little bit more personality. Boop, boop. And I find twos in general look a little bit more punchy. So I like working in twos unless the motion is actually too fast to capture in twos, even doing cutout. And if you've already set your stuff on tweens, you can, there is a button in Toon Boom. So you can just shift select all your keys here. And this little button here, create keyframes on, you may need to go into your, your customize settings. So you can just right click here, customize and take a look in here until you find it if you don't have it there already. But the set keyframes on, create keyframes on button, you select all the keyframes you want to manipulate and then you can set them all to twos just by putting the number two in here, first frame, last frame, keeping existing frames. So this stuff's all pretty self-explanatory and you hit okay and it'll automatically interpolate it into twos. 
But you can see, even though these are both on twos, uh, this one has a little bit more hang time, and then it's got some more stretch down at the bottom. Just these little subtleties will create a difference. Reep. This one's a little bit more cartoony. And then this last one, this one is something I see a lot of animators do when they're ball bouncing. The stretch here is hitting, and then it smushes, and then it's barely got any air time at all, or it'll still be touching like that, and they'll get, like, this is a lot of frames where the ball is just hitting the ground. And this is when you get a ball bounce that looks like a ball jump. This ball is bouncing, blink, and this ball is jumping. Boop, boop, boop. And that's one thing I really like to do if I'm playing around with my timing, is I try and think of how it would sound, especially if you're doing special effects, because if you have uh, a water that's hitting something, you want it to like come in and then hit and go whoosh, and like you want to, it's kind of, it's really hard to describe to somebody, especially if you're working as a supervisor and you want someone to change their animation. It's really hard to explain clinically how to make their water more watery it's easier to for everyone to understand if you say i need it it's kind of like going blah, 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 but i need to go whoosh so when i whenever i look at an animation or i think about what i need to do timing wise i think about the sound i want so a bounce is a bunk bunk and this guy feels more bunky bunk and this guy's more mm boop mm boop mm boop <laughs> if that if that makes sense so I encourage you to make a ball, and you don't even need it to do something sensible like a bounce. Oh, let me get a brand new ball. Clear out all the timing. Beep. So we can just use this ball. Let's just bring him over here. Beep. Beep. And play with this ball going back and forth like this. Another little cycle. And now instead of just hitting the wall here and going back, see it starts out slower. So I'm going to drag these keys out and just make sure that my spacing is a little bit closer. So the, the cutout way to do it is to use this uh, ease on multiple parameters, but you can go individually frame by frame and figure out your spacing that way. Another thing a lot of animators do, they'll set a keyframe here. So say, okay, I want it, here's halfway between these two keys. I'm gonna create a keyframe there. Let me set my preferences to not stop motion. I tend more to work in twos, so I keep it on stop motion. So here's my halfway point. I want my halfway point to happen much earlier. So now my halfway, what was previously the half distance, is going to happen one third of the way across. Whoop. So you can see it's going fast, and then it's hitting a wall right here. Whew. And then it's not going as fast anymore. Whew. So we're going to take that same half distance, and we're going to put it much closer to the end. Boop. And now what we're seeing is a slow and then a sudden, like a kick. If something were to kick it here, boonk, kapunk, kapunk. And it's hitting this wall and coming back pretty abruptly. But instead of hitting the wall, if this was attached to an elastic, what would that look like? All right, so I'm going to make this even again. So the ball's going long. And now it's hitting the wall and just going back. And we haven't got a weird kick boonk here in the middle. But instead of hitting a wall, I want to hit like an elastic stretchy, let's say a net or something. So it would hit the net at speed and then it would continue, but it would go much, much slower. So let's say here's the net and here's the stretch. So we're gonna pull this back so that it hits the net, the theoretical net, we'll say it's, we'll say here's the net. And then it's going to continue past because it's a stretchy net, but we want it to slow down as it goes here. All right. So what we can do is bring the last position sooner. So here I'm going to put a keyframe directly before and drag it back. So now it's hitting the second last one halfway. Boop. And you can see... It looks like it's slowing out. It's not quite what I want. I think I'm going to bring it back this way a little bit. Boonk. Boonk. And now that I, it's, it's kind of slowing out the way I want, we'll say it hits the net, and then it's going to pull this net back, and then ease, ease, ease. 
And I think I might want one or two more frames in there. Ooh, boom. And now I wanted to hit the end of the net because we're imagining that we're going to animate this, uh, the net so that it's actually curling around this ball. So we're going to pull, 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 pull. And then I want it to hit the end of this stretch. And we can even make it even more subtle. So we can grab this. So here I can put another keyframe and then drag it back one. So those last few little nuances are super, super close together and the ball's barely moving. And then we're going to have it slingshot back. Boosh. So we want it right now. It's the timing. The spacing here is very even. But I want this part to happen faster. I want this to feel like, okay, it's hit the end. And maybe we'll get one frame here where it hasn't quite got our momentum back yet. So it's starting to go. And then it's going to shoot back. So I want this to ease. I want these guys here to be much faster because I want it to feel like it's being slingshotted out of here. And then we just want it to come to a stop at the end. So what I can do is use my ease here and I can set it on this side bloop, so that so the closer this is, if this is set to zero, why, then this spacing is going to be very, very even. This is the end, the very final frame. But if I have it slow out, over to this side, hit apply, then you can see these guys are getting closer together because it's slowing out of the movement. Let's put it even more so. Apply. So now we're going to get a lot more speed here and less here. So let's see how that works. Boink. So now I feel my first part's too slow because the ball's getting kicked into the net, but it's happening like yeah, that's kind of a wimpy kick. If I need the timing, like the ball has to be kicked into the net here uh, because that's what my scene has been set up to do. Because if you have a scene given to you by a director, then you don't have any decision on how long the scene is. They tell you, oh, it's 41 frames long. The scene has to be 41 frames long. So we can have the ball get kicked a little later. So I'm just going to grab this keyframe, hold control, and that'll copy it and just drag it over in the timeline. So now the ball's going to get kicked at frame nine and boonk. So now you can see it's coming in faster. Let me undo it and show you the difference. From frame one to 21, it's going to get kicked into the net, boonk. Or frame 11 to 21, now if it gets kicked in the net in that time, you can see this is happening much faster. It's going boof, boof, boop, boop. Boop. So <laughs> playing around with just the simple timing and stuff like that. If something, if you need something to happen faster, it has to happen a shorter amount of time. And most of the time, new animators make things too slow. They're really floaty. They're afraid to put keyframes like right on top of each other. Boom. See, we can even move this right up here. So if this gets kicked on frame 15, let's see how fast that is. Boof. See, that's way cooler. Boof. Whoop. Boof. Whoop. And use sound effects boof whip boof whip is that like is that what you want it to feel like because that's what timing is there's no right i can't tell you oh here's the timing tricks if you put this on 14 frames before and this on 12 frames it's just not it's not a thing so what you got to do is just practice with your timing and use the ball. Like this took me no time to do. It's 25 minutes now. I've played around with six different balls and just affected their timings in, t in small ways. And I think if you really spend the time to think about timing in that way and just sound effects and feelings, like then when you're actually animating a character, you can kind of take that play around and put it into the character. So if your character's getting up, but it's kind of like, uh, getting up, then that sounds really even. Your spacing is going to be kind of like, it's like close, you know, nothing's really getting bunked. But if your character goes, Whoa, and jumps out of the chair, that's a tighter spacing because it's, Whoa, it's fast. It's Whoa. so whatever you're doing, use sound effects and it is in character dialogues the exact same way. Because if I'm if I'm really not, I don't know what I'm going to say, then I'm just going to 
move like slowly but if i'm like oh you have to oh i gotta tell you about this stuff then i i'm doing fast things i'm saying fast things i'm doing fast things and those are going to be much tighter keys you're going to get a lot more things happening because it's a ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da. <laughs> hopefully that makes sense i just kind of wanted to talk about a little bit about how i do timing and it's sound effects that's how i do any of my special effects if it's a big splash then it's like a goosh then i'm like oh that's gonna need a lot of volume and it's gonna be like oh it's gonna be heavy and have a lot of weight and just blah to it and if it's kind of a bloop then it's gonna be a little bloop <laughs> that's how i figure out my timing bloop it's gonna be a little splash it's gonna have like small pieces it's gonna break up quicker it's gonna be pa -pa -da -pa. so sound effects Highly recommend it. And use your ball. So you could even have a sound effect. Just record something. If you're by yourself at home, you can record something. All Windows have simple recording things. And, and Macs have even better recording stuff like GarageBand. So good. Uh, so make a sound effect like whoop, boo. And then take your ball and try and figure out what the ball is doing. It goes whoop, boo, or anything. And if you can animate a ball to sound effects, and the next time you, you are doing something with something more complex, like a character, then I want you to think about it in a sound effects way, whether he's really sluggish or he's really punchy, and then use your spacing to try and describe that movement. So fast paced stuff, you're gonna have lots more keys tight together, and then a kind of a flowy blah kind of feeling, then you're, you can probably get away with really long spacing. But then once you've got your timing figured out, if you're doing cutout, I almost always turn it to twos when I'm done. So now my little ball's done. I'm gonna hit that button, which I talked about earlier, create, create keyframes on. Now the whole thing is just set on twos, stop motion. So now my whip is a little too fast, I feel. Whip, boo. Yeah, now my kick might need a little bit more love there because it's going from there to there. And that has to do with the actual program. So you can see these balls are really far apart. Boo. There you go. Boo, boo. Boo, boo. So you may or may not need to adjust your timing once you hit that button. M more often, I work on twos as I go rather than doing the twos later. So I'm usually drawing, uh, doing everything by hand because special effects are still mostly hand drawn. Some of the stuff we get away with particles and things of that nature, but a lot, a lot of stuff is just drawing. So I'll be working in a more classical way where you set up your major keys and then in between or whatever, or I'll work just straight ahead, who knows? So that's it for this one. Uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about timing. This is a very basic, just, I just want you to think about timing if you're not, uh, first of all, just have it in your brain to think about this and to use, and I like to use sound effects. <laughs> it seems silly, but whenever I'm working with uh, juniors and I'm trying to help them improve their animation, that's how I critique them. I'll watch their stuff and I'll say, you know, you kind of got a move, what you need is a what? And they've found it helpful. They've told me so. <laughs> Hopefully you will too. If that works for you, if you find this helpful, please let me know if you like the sound effect method. Or if you have a system that you like, that you please share that as well, because I'm everybody has a different system that they like. If there's something in particular about animation you want me to talk about, I could do a recorded critique where I go over someone's work. I might even find some of my old college animation or something and, and just rip that to shreds. Uh, let's see, who knows? I don't have a plan, as you know. But thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I'll see you in the next episode.